uh, to be here in worship. I know that what's on uh, most of our minds is the events of last night. I'll be saying something more during prayer time, uh, concerns and joy, so I want you to know that I, um, I'm not ignoring that, but we'll um, continue proceeding forward in thinking about uh, and understanding ways that we can be uh, spreading Christ's love, which is the purpose of this church. And so, uh, first of all, next Friday and Saturday, it's going to be Vacation Bible School, and that uh, it's going to begin at 5.30 and end at uh, 8 o'clock on Friday, and then on Saturday, begin at 8.45 and end at 1.30. As always, they can use volunteers, or if you can make donations, uh, you know, in terms of uh, if you want to give goodies or money, I know that will really be appreciated, and they'll be at the Methodist Church. Also, uh, be sure to uh, have on your calendars, if you don't already, uh, for the next step uh, gathering, and that's going to be on August 14th at 7 o'clock in the church board room or conference room. Uh, so I hope that we'll have a great turnout and that we continue to go forward in developing the homebound support groups and then the fire as fire. Faith, I guess fire and faith, same thing, right? Uh, faith and uh, uh, f faith and prayer groups. So be, be praying for that as well. Table days is going to be uh, for for the table day breakfast is going to be August 24th, and that's from six to nine. And I know that Leanne, as always, will appreciate any sort of help that's possible. So be sure uh, to talk to her if you're wanting to help, or if, and and if you know somebody in the community that might be interested in helping, uh, be sure to encourage them uh, to volunteer. And that uh, uh, the, the funds that's raised goes towards the Thanksgiving meal, which has, has grown over the years and re really reaches a lot of people that uh, might not have any sort of sense of uh, Thanksgiving celebration. So then beginning two weeks from today, that this is, came out of the next step uh, meeting is that we felt that at well, five minutes, at 1025, uh, that we would have five minutes of silence before worship begins. And so that's, this is a way for us just to uh, start uh, be, being more uh, in, in the mind of the spirit, being present. And so again, that will begin on uh, July 28th and, and we'll start at 1025. And so at 1025, we'll come up and say we'll now begin uh, our five minutes of silence. And so I want to, uh, for all of you to be aware of that. And for those who are not here, be sure to share that with them. The last announcement that I'm going to share uh, that I have is that uh, I, I shared this last week that I, I just felt the spirit uh, encouraging me to bring this up and that is to have a prayer for Bonner Springs. That this is not to be some sort of gripe, but rather it's a time to just be praying for the different aspects of Bonner Springs. Uh, that is not only the city government, uh, for the different businesses, uh, for people who are doing social work, and for the citizens. And so uh, we'll be having that at Centennial Park, and it'll be at 10 a.m. at the gazebo, and so I want to encourage you uh, to come to that if you are interested. Are there any announcement that, announcements I may have forgot? Carol.
Thank you very much, Carol. We know, uh, in fact, I just, uh, we, sat, we had a ministerial uh, fellowship meeting and uh, Pastor Garrett um, Ray was there and he said actually the demand uh, for kids and families that need assistance is actually greater in the summer than, than during the school year. So uh, thank you for bringing that up, Monica. That's awesome. Thank you for bringing that to our attention. The deadline for the August, September, I believe, is I say the August, September tidy is this Wednesday. So please, if you have anything to put in the tidy, give it to me, copy it to Sean. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Sheila. If there are no other announcements, let us now have a prelude. This morning, the call to worship is one that was written by Beth Merrill Neal. She has a blog on the internet and says, hold fast to what is good. For the beauty of this summer day and the comfort of friends nearby, for the invitation to be loved and to love for our God who extends that call for time set apart to nourish our soul for the time to go out into the world armed with love for all these things we give thanks let us worship God Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we know we come to the church this morning with the events of last night on our mind. And we truly know that this morning is about you. Please help us to understand those events. Please help us to worship you with undistracted hearts. Yes, a big order, but this is our prayer. You know our, how our minds wander to the upcoming week, certainly the present worries, thoughts of others, and many other things. 
Help us to put those thoughts away and focus on you in this space of time and focus on your glory. Help us as we ask for your Holy Spirit to enter our minds, hearts, and souls. We pray for the strength to exalt your holy name in our singing, in our listening to the word today, and interacting with your people here and throughout the world with love. Help us to truly worship you this morning again with undistracted hearts. In your blessed Son's name, Amen. be seated. We do come to the time of concerns and joys of the church. And so uh, last night I wrote this in regards to what happened um, regarding the attempt at assassination. So I'm going to just share this. Prayers for the families of the deceased, including the assassin's family. Prayers for the recovery of Donald Trump and others who were injured. May God's healing power flow through 
uh, towards sound health. Prayers for no finger pointing, but towards, uh, but towards uh, disagreeing in respect and love. And pray that we will find co God's common ground. Let me say it again. Pray that we find God's common ground in common cause as a nation. Then other prayer concerns that have been shared here is, uh, we're sorry to hear this, Ernie, uh, as, uh, Ernie Jeffries has hurt his back again, so God bless him, and that uh, we just pray for uh, complete healing and, and as quick as possible. I, we know that he has suffered immensely, and so we pray for him and also for you as a caretaker. Um, travel mercies. This is a joy. It's a travel mercies for Dave and Monica as they go out to California. That's what some people say. For uh, Kathy, uh, Kathy's, Katie's uh, wedding service. So we pray that the, the journey out there will be fun. And when you're there, that will be fun. And coming back, and that it will all be safe. Uh, also, as always, we need to be praying for First Christian Church. Uh, to be praying for the next step. We now have a focus as to what direction we believe God has called us to go. And then also, as I mentioned earlier, uh, to be praying for Bonner Springs and that uh, to, if you have a, an opportunity to come and join in the prayer service this Tuesday. So let us now bow our heads for a word of prayer. Life-giving God, as mentioned just a few moments ago, prayers uh, for the recovery, not only of uh, the former president, but also of those who were injured and for the families that lost their loved ones. Loving God, I know that there's all kinds of feelings racing through. As the rhetoric gets hotter and hotter and worse and worse and more ugly and violent than ever, perhaps not than ever, but that certainly within memory. And so I pray, dear God, that we here at First Christian Church be an example of, uh, be, be, be an example of a, your shining light. That we as a nation need to be listening to each other, respecting each other, not belittling each other, but to be able to acknowledge that there is a common ground that you provide, that you provide a common cause, and that the difference of opinions may actually be a blessing, not a curse. So I pray, dear God, that, for, that, that we will quit the finger pointing, which I believe is one of the major causes, and which both sides have been guilty of, of where we're at today. And so I pray, dear God, again, we will take seriously the purpose that you've given to this church, and that is to spread your love. That we'll take serious the mission that you've given us uh, to love Jesus, uh, to work together, to serve others, and to reach the world. For indeed, we have to take this seriously because otherwise launching into the future would have been futile and we know it's not 
We pray, dear God, for the names that were mentioned just a few moments ago of those who are suffering. And we pray, dear God, for those who are suffering that were, their names were not mentioned here today. We pray for, dear God, that have joys in their lives. And we know that this is a church that gives you thanks and praise for the different blessings that you've given us. Help us, dear God, take seriously, take to heart the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The scripture reading this morning comes from Matthew 5, verses 1 through 12. And I'm sure there's not a single one of us here today that will not recognize this is from the Sermon on the Mount. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. We ask the Lord to add his blessing to the reading and hearing of this scripture. Thank you, Jane. Last Sunday, I preached from Romans chapter 12. This is Paul's letter to the Christians in Rome. And he was providing a glimpse of what it means to be Christ-like. It's a term that we can identify. To live Christ-like is a lifelong endeavor. We keep learning. And also, there's times that we will stray away living the Jesus lifestyle. A friend from my hometown told me about the church that he grew up in that the pastor 
claimed that for 11 years he had been without sin. It's all right to laugh. I think it's funny. 11 years. Now, I happen to know that pastor, and I'll put this in a, a mild diplomatic way. I'm 100% certain and very skeptical that he is at a saint-like level. And in fact, when you study the saints, that most of the saints were in fact quite humble and that they were willing to be vulnerable about their sins. Many of you may have read the author Philip Yancey and that Philip Yancey had a mother that she too believed that she had not sinned for many years. Now, even though we chuckled about the, the, the pastor, is that his mother claim of being sinless had an adverse effect upon him as a teenager and as a young man. Now, fortunately, he did not leave the Christian faith. That he began to realize that her version was not quite complete. And so that he had to relearn as to what it, mean, what, what it meant to be a disciple of Jesus and that he come to understand there's no such thing as a sinless person. And that during this time, he uh, began to discover and to experience the presence and the power of God's grace. He began to write about this. And that the result is, is that he wrote many books about God's grace. And that he, in, in which he has ended up selling millions of books. And that he has literally traveled around the world speaking about God's grace. This was not the kind of life he had anticipated. And that I just recently heard him interviewed and he is truly a very humble man. The next few Sundays, I'm going to be preaching on the Sermon on the Mount. This is the longest sermon that we have recorded in the Gospels. And it goes from Matthew chapter 5 through chapter 7. I will preach on most of the passages, not all, but most. For they lay out in more detail of what it looks like to live in the Christian lifestyle, or I should say to live Christ-like. Now, the Beatitudes was spoken in the early part of Jesus' ministry. He had been baptized by his cousin John, and then he went into the wilderness, and he prayed and fasted for 40 days. And at the end, he was then tempted on three occasions by Satan, and that he turned down these temptations. Then he chose his first group of disciples, James and John, and Andrew and Peter. And they started going from village to village, sharing the good news, healing the sick, freeing people from the, uh, from the demons. And news began to spread about Jesus. He began to draw large crowds. One day, he sees a group of people. He goes up to the mountainside, and he sat down. Jesus teaches as to what we now call the Beatitudes, which simply means to be blessed. Now, what I'm going to do over the next few moments is share something that was written by Janet Hunt. And what she did was to take each one of these uh, 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 Beatitudes and how that has re re reflected in her life, how that has impacted her life. And so we, we begin with uh, Beatitude number one, in which she writes, I listened to a woman whose voice broke as she prayed for a friend who was suffering. Blessed are those who mourn. I heard another 
uh, excuse me, I heard another speak of patience uh, and needed in waiting for the seeds of mission of her committee uh, planted to grow, to, uh, to take root and grow. Blessed are those who thirst and hunger for righteousness. I stood and watched the director of a homeless shelter give full attention to a young man who towered over her. He told her that he was working on his self-esteem. Blessed are those who are poor in spirit. Blessed are those who are merciful. And the one who was poor in spirit was uh, the homeless man, and the one that was merciful was the director of the homeless shelter. Next, I shared a meal with a woman who had given her life to fight for racial justice and has suffered the consequences of following her divine call in the form of estrangement from loved ones, disdain from neighbors and co-workers, and death threats from strangers. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Next one. I listened to one whose father forced him to attend the March on Washington in 1963 in which he heard the Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech. And in being at that event and hearing King's speech, it changed his life. And that Hunt writes that this man has worked in caring for the least of these in which he has shared that the uh, United States has come a long ways, but as we know just from last night, it still has a long ways to go. In which she writes, Blessed are the peacemakers. The last one. I thank the child who got up early and made chocolate chip muffins from scratch as a gift to visitors at her church. At a young age, she learned the practice of hospitality. Hunt saw the child's eyes light up with joy when the visitors delighted in her chocolate chip muffins. Blessed are those who are pure in heart. We must not sentimentalize or water down the Beatitudes. When we carefully ponder on what Jesus said, it makes us uncomfortable. Over the decades, many fellow preachers have softened this passage into a warm and fuzzy feeling. Initially, when we first read it, we are inspired by Jesus' profound wisdom. But when we start to connect the Beatitudes to our lives in church, we begin to squirm. Caroline Lewis poses these questions. Do I thunder, excuse me, do I thunder? Do I hunger or and thirst for righteousness, or do I turn away? If we are aware that a child and a woman is being abused, do we seek help for them? or assume that someone else will take care of their living hell? Do we hunger and thirst for righteousness? Or do I explain away my inaction because I don't want think people, uh, people to think I'm taking sides because I want to play it safe? The good news of Jesus is a word of protest. Jesus was a person who stood up and said no. Jesus was living in a turbulent time, much as, as what we're going through today. Sometimes you'll hear people say, this is the worst time ever, which that's just really a hyperbole. That's an, an exaggeration when you read history. Because during this time that Jesus was living in, they were under Roman uh, occupation. The religious establishment was divided and that the people felt that, that, that they didn't really care about them. 
poverty was widespread and that the Romans made life harsh for those they dominated. Caroline Lewis writes, The Beatitudes are a call to action to be church, a call to action to make Jesus present and visible as the world is going in the wrong direction. The Beatitudes are a call to action for the sake of creating the world God imagines, the sort of world that God wants if we are willing to turn ourselves over to him. Our imaginations are limited. The Beatitudes expands our understanding of what it means to be church and every Christian to be Christ-like. Let us now bow our heads for a word of prayer. Loving God, I really look forward to going through the Sermon on the Mount. For really, we do need to spend just a few Sundays having it clear in our minds as to what it truly means to be Christ-like. We know, and I know all of these folks here today will not make the claim that we've been sinless for 11 years. And that, in fact, we're constantly asking for your forgiveness and how we can repent and how we can be able to move forward so that we can continue to do your work, how we can continue to be Christ-like. And so I pray, dear God, that these next few Sundays, that I pray that I'll be open, that we will be open as to what it truly means to be your disciple. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Coming to this table, we are reminded of our baptism commitment. And that if anybody wishes to come forward, that they've not yet made that confession of faith that Jesus Christ, your personal Lord and Savior, you're welcome to come forward. But I would also want to encourage all of us during this time to be thinking about those of us who've been baptized of the commitment we've made. Because in baptism, it's about committing our lives to Jesus Christ. And that is why it's so important that we have communion every Sunday so that we can have that reminder as to what this church is all about. Before Jesus was arrested, he had a meal with his disciples. And that he took a loaf of bread and he broke it in half. And he blessed it. And he said, this represents my broken body. Whenever you eat of it, do so in memory of me. Then he took a cup of wine and he blessed it. And he says, this cup represents the blood that's been shed for 
all of humankind for the forgiveness of sins. This is the promise. This is the covenant I make. That I'll be with you until the end of time. Father God, we thank you for the wheat harvest that has brought us another year of the flour needed for this bread. We appreciate the humbleness of bread as a representation of Jesus' holy body. Help us to remember that wheat and bread, well humble, have been chosen by Jesus to represent himself. May we always remember that God uses small things to make large statements. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we recognize this cup to represent the blood of Jesus that was shed for us to wash away our sins. I pray we accept this gift of salvation in a worthy manner, always praising and thanking you for giving it to us. I pray this through your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ.
Lord, we ask your blessing on these offerings. We pray that they will bring peace and love to the world around us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So I do again want to encourage anyone who's interested to come down, and if you're available at that time, at 10 a.m. at the Centennial Park uh, on Cedar Street, uh, which we'll be praying for uh, Bonner Springs. Uh, as uh, We want this to be a better community than ever it ever has been. And yes. Oh, got vegetables. We got veggies. I was wondering about that. <laughs> So we got vegetables out there, and I know that Leanne, first of all, is just more than happy to share it with the church, but I also know that she wants it wiped out, correct? She wants it wiped out. She wants empty boxes. Yeah. She will, tr she, she will not judge you negatively, but judge you positively by taking it all away. So let us now bow our heads for a word of prayer. Dear God, I do pray that we truly will be a beacon of your light as we leave here today. That we will, we, we will acknowledge that we will make mistakes, that we will sin, but that we also know, dear God, that we can continue striving to be Christ-like. And so I pray, dear God, as we leave here today, that we're, perhaps we go back and reread the Beatitudes and see as to how this relates to our lives and to this church. For we all aspire to be more like you. And I pray, dear God, that we'll continue in that journey to be your servants. And together we all say, Amen. Yeah.
we meet again.